All right, here we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my new YouTube channel. My name is John. I am a science teacher, and I started this channel because I was uh, pretty taken by what we've seen recently with something called ChatGPT. Um, I thought it was a really interesting thing that a lot of people might be able to use in different ways, and obviously people have jumped on the whole, uh, I'm a programmer, can ChatGPT do my job for me bandwagon. And uh, maybe it can, maybe it can't. Those are fun videos to watch, but I'm kind of more interested in what can it do for maybe a more everyday job, maybe everyday person. So like I said, I'm a teacher and I think I can use AI to improve my teaching and improve my efficiency with how well, I, how well and how quickly I get my various teaching jobs and tasks done. I think that includes lesson planning. I think that includes emailing parents. So uh, I'll give you an example of emailing parents a little bit later and how I let AI do that job for me. Uh, first, though, if you're really, really new to ChatGPT, uh, we'll do a quick explanation of what ChatGPT is. And the best way to explain it is for me to not do the explanation. We're actually going to let ChatGPT explain what ChatGPT is. So here we go. We're going to type into our ChatGPT. Oh, by the way, let's go back a step. Uh, did I mention we're doing one takes? We're not doing take and take and take and edit and edit and edit. I don't have time for that. I need to spend more time doing lesson planning and family stuff. So at the beginning of this YouTube experience, it's one takes, it's raw, it's going to be how it is. So if you come over here to openai.com forward slash forward slash blog forward slash chat GPT, you get this little intro splash page. Scroll down a bit, click right here to try chat GPT and it will bring you to this page right here. Might have you log in with your Google, might have you create an account. You don't have to create an account if you have Google, just sign in with your Google and you're good to go. Once you get here, we can type in a question and let the AI handle it for us. What are we gonna let the AI handle first? Hey, let's answer that question. What is ChatGPT? So what is ChatGPT? We hit enter and we wait a very short amount of time for the answer to come back. And in a moment, a moment, a moment, this is about as long as I've ever had it take. There we go. ChatGPT is a large language-based model or language model trained by OpenAI to generate human-like text. It can be used to create natural sounding responses to user input in a conversational setting such as a chatbot or virtual assistant. ChatGPT is based on the GPT-3. It's really a tongue twister, guys. Generative pre-trained Transformer 3 model, which uses deep learning techniques to generate text that is similar to what human a human might write. I could have researched for probably an hour and not come up with that overall answer. So that's about as good as it gets, with one exception. If I go down to here, this button says try again. If I click on try again, I'll get a slightly modified answer. It's a large language model trained by OpenAI to generate human-like text in response to input from a user. It's based on the GPT-3 model, which was trained on a massive amount of text data. It can generate text that's often indistinguishable from text written by a human. ChatGPT is specifically designed to be used in chat applications, allowing it to respond to messages in real time and engage in conversation with users. So it's a slightly different answer, but it's also a usable answer in terms of explaining to you what it is, just in case. We'll hit try again. Well, that's odd, but interesting at the same time. Okay, well, let's ask a slightly different question. What are you? And the answer comes up shortly. The servers have been pretty heavily hit today. And it gets a little bit sassy with me, but that's kind of fun. Uh, it is not a human, we knew that, but also something you'll figure out is it does not have the ability to browse the internet or engage in real world activities, at least not yet. Hello, Skynet. All right, so this is the basic explanation of what it is. And what I wanna show off is what possible uses it could have on a regular use uh, capability. So the first thing I kind of realized is that I might be able to shorten my workday 
with being more efficient by you letting AI do the job for me. So again, if I want to try and make a lesson plan, I can do that. We'll do that in a different video. If I want to have it uh, help me with uh, progress reports, maybe we'll do that in a different video. The first thing that came to mind at the moment uh, when I was first playing around with this the other day happened to be the first thing that was on my to-do list, which was I needed to send a reminder email to my homeroom kids. We call it an advisory. I need to send a home, uh, an email to my advisory and specifically their parents reminding them because it's Christmas time that we're going to have a white elephant uh, gift exchange party uh, on Friday. And uh, I just wanted to send that email and send it out. And, you know, I could have taken five minutes maybe and put together an email and written it and edited it and obsessed over it and checked the grammar and checked the spelling. Or I could have done something like this. I could have, whoops, not the right thing. I could have gone over here and given it this input. I'm going to tell ChatGPT, hey, reminder email to my advisory about the White Elephant Party next Friday. Oh, by the way, $5 limit. I'm going to copy that. We're going to go back over to ChatGPT. We're going to come over here, paste, enter. And there it is. Hi, everybody. Just a quick reminder that our annual White Elephant Party will be taking place next Friday. Please remember to bring a wrapped gift valued at $5 or less to participate. See you all next Friday. Best, and I sign my name. Th this is sendable. This is what really blew me away. Now, I don't sound blown away right now, but in the moment, I was just, oh, my gosh. It was amazing. The, the, the AI figured out... Well, first off, it didn't get confused by the idea of white elephant. Um, now, I did include the word party up here, but it figured out it knew what a white elephant party was. I honestly was expecting it to tell me something about an elephant that was white, but I didn't get anything about an elephant that was white. It knew what a white elephant party was. Not only did it know what a white elephant party was, but look at this. It knows that at a white elephant party, you're supposed to bring the gift wrapped. Blew me away it figured out within context what I needed. That this, this is a sendable email. I can send that to my advisee kids. I can carbon copy their parents on that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that email. And the actual email that I got when I did it, because I copied it and I sent it, was in fact this one right here. Let's do that again. Hi students, just a reminder that our advisory white elephant gift exchange is coming up next Friday. Please remember to bring a wrapped gift valued at $5 or less to participate. It's always a fun and silly event, so don't miss out. I, I'm not that cool. I wouldn't have written that line. I just wouldn't have, but it actually fits really well. Would I send it? Yes, I would send it. Would I have come up with it? I don't know. But the AI came up with it in a matter of seconds. I saw that. I loved it. Copy, paste, send. And out it went. So that was my first foray into uh, using chat GPT in a real way. And that's when it suddenly dawned on me that maybe I could have a whole entire journey of using AI to improve my teaching and make my life more efficient. Um, what I then did is I realized, well, if I'm going to do this, I may as well dive into YouTube and try that out again. Tried it once before. Didn't go anywhere. It's cool. So I decided, well, if I'm going to do that, let's do this the right way. Headed back to ChatGPT. And I said, uh, what free record screen recording software is most often used by YouTubers? And I waited a short second. What? All right, so this will happen from time to time. It thinks you're asking about uh, browsing the internet and it's reading what you gave it and based on certain triggers in its algorithm, it's spitting back at you a little bit of sassiness. And normally it isn't this sassy, so let's try what, how could I re-ask that? Um, what screen re, what free screen re, Recording software is can be used to make YouTube videos. 
Let's try that. There we go. All right, this is going to give you a much more useful answer. It gives you a little bit of an intro. That's nice of it. It didn't go any farther. Oh, no, there it is. OBS Studio. So it included OBS Studio, and I've used OBS before, and it's what I'm using right now. I'm a new at this. Sorry about that. Uh, don't have good lighting, don't have good audio, don't have a good webcam, but it is what it is. Here we go. So I can re-ask this, um, compare the different free screen recording uh, software options. And let's see what it gives. And this time around, it's going to give us a little more info about each one. And this is, again, more what I got the first time I asked it the question. If you ask the question a different way, you're going to get a different answer. Sometimes a short one, sometimes a long one. This is much more like what I got the first time around. So this is, for me, it was just a confirmation that OBS was still useful and usable. So I went with OBS, and then I went to set it all up, and I asked it, uh, what are some basic OBS Studio uh, beginner tips and once I did that it gave me a few basic tips for beginners and it's telling me I need to get used to understanding audio and video sources and I need to get used to using scenes uh, the first time I used this, it actually gave me some uh, go to this setting and set it at this. Go to this setting and setting it at that. Um, but this gives you the basic intro. Um, if I want a, a more involved version, would I go to a YouTube tutorial? Absolutely. And I did. But this at least got me started on the whole idea of using OBS and the basic how hard would it be to set it all up. And at that point, I knew I needed a YouTube channel. So what did I go for next? I needed a channel name. But how did I figure out the channel name? <laughs> what are some possible YouTube channel names for or themed with AI and teaching It actually gave me some channel possibilities. AI educators, Intelligent Tutor, the AI Classroom, not bad. Teach AI, the AI Tutor, kind of obvious. AI Lessons, the AI Teacher, a little pretentious. AI Learning, AI, AI Tutoring, AI Education. Again, I asked it a slightly different version of the question. I got some slightly different answers, but this gives you an idea of what it can generate to get you started. So from an answer like this, the title of my current uh, channel, which is AI Powered Life, was born. Uh, maybe later I'll come up with a better search and better name and I'll change my name in the future. Uh, but this is what got me started. Uh, this is what uh, ChatGPT uh, did get, to get me started on trying a new YouTube channel. And it's how I've already used it in my real job as a teacher, sending a quick little email to some parents. It only saved me about five minutes, but it, uh, it was fun and exciting. And I'm going to show you guys some other ways that it's going to save a heck of a lot more time and give me a lot more insight into getting my job done more efficiently. So uh, we're going to stop the video for now. Uh, stick around, subscribe. We'll let you know when we come out with something new. Y'all have a good one. Bye.